Hello to all of my alien actresses and hot dog lovers. Today we are going to be asking, how would I judge RuPaul's Drag Race? Sorry, Canada's Drag Race season one. It's funny the little switch up they got there. Um, yeah, I y'all voted for it. I put it on the poll because it's another season like UK season three that I have actually been wanting to do uh, in this video format for a little while, but. I just ended up scrapping it and just kind of like saving it for later because I had troubles like really deciding like what I wanted to do. Um, but I put it on the poll. Uh, so if I was forced to, I'd do it. Uh, and y'all chose it, so I'm doing it. <laughs> the rules to remember, as always, are the season has to be as long as season one of Canada's Drag Race originally was, which was 10 episodes. And the performances and the challenges need to be based off of how well someone did or how people would predict they would do. So I'm not just going to put somebody in the top when they were originally in the bottom, or vice versa, unless there is strong fan support for that being the case. The goal, as always, is to act as if I am the head judge and craft the season however I can imagine to make it as fun and eventful as possible, while also being fair with my judging of the season by combining my own personal tastes and what was shown to us on the show. Before we go any further though, please like, comment, and subscribe on this video if you enjoy yourself. Um, I appreciate uh, the love uh, on the last video. It took me a long time to make. I do really deeply appreciate that. Um, and uh, please tell me uh, if the audio in this video is better uh, than it has been in the past. Uh, because this video, I'm using a new microphone that I got. Uh, this microphone is about three times as expensive as my previous microphone. So um, if you say it's not better, I will cry, but I will understand and I will try to make it fit better. Because <laughs> this is my first video I'm doing with it. There's going to be probably some complication that I'm not realizing that I'm going to realize later. <laughs> Anyways, let us dive into the video proper with episode one. Alrighty, in episode one, we have ourselves the design challenge where they get the different, like, Canadia, can Canadia, <laughs> so I was going to say Canadia, <laughs> Canada-related boxes uh, that they have to uh, make their outfits from. Now, originally, the winner of this challenge was Rita Baga, and placing high were Boa and Jimbo. Now, none of them are in the top. <laughs> none of them are in the top anymore, because I completely, I disagree. I disagree, girl. I disagree with that. Because, okay, first off, like, Rita, I think was actually, Rita and Jumbo, I think, did pretty good in this challenge as well. Like, I would say Jumbo's my fourth place and Rita's, like, my fifth place. Like, they both actually did a good job in this challenge. I know people clown on Rita's, uh, like, little blue dress reveal that she had, because that's not a good dress, really in my opinion, but, like, the overcoat that she had above it, I think was actually really well made. Uh, so, like, I would say, you know, she's probably my fifth best, and then Jimbo did a really good job as well. Um, and I really considered putting in the top. It was either her or Anastasia for me. I, I decided on Anastasia. Uh, but I could understand those two being in the top. Uh, but I just decided to put none of them in the top. Kiara, oh my god, I love the scarecrow outfit that she does here. It is so amazing. And to come out there and do this kind of, you know, kind of kind of creepy scarecrow, fun, pumpkin-y eye makeup look for like your first runway on Drag Race, that does not really align with your style, like your usual style in the slightest, is so iconic. I'm sorry. It is amazing. Like I cannot. Um, and then Scarlet Bobo and Anastasia both had great runways. Anastasia has like, like the big, you know, like, like poncho kind of cape thing uh, that is made out of that, you know, kind of coat. Uh, I, I say it's a coat because it gives me coat vibes, but I think it's actually like a, it was, it was, I forget what it actually is made out of. A material that is so hard, looks so hard to work with, but she may look so beautiful. Uh, and then uh, Scarlet Bobo has this kind of like cowgirl, uh, you know, look here um, with the fun little design elements. I really, really love both of those looks. Um, and so this top three, again, I was really struggling between Anastasia and Jimbo on who I thought uh, should be in the top. But this top was pretty locked for me when it comes to Kiara and Scarlet. I love these looks. Um, 
the rest of our safe placements, besides our, you know, big changes, you know, Priyanka, Tainomi, Alona, they're all still there. And our bottom placements are going to be exactly the same. Kine is going to be low, and Lemon and Juicebox are going to be the bottom two. Uh, they are going to be lip syncing uh, to I Really, Really Like You uh, by Carly Rae Jepsen. And I do think Lemon it just inches out the win here against Juicebox. But it's a very close lip sync, I must say. Uh, but she is going to win here, and Juicebox is going to be sent home. And, I mean, the timeline where Lemon goes home in the first week, that is a crazy timeline that I don't want to live in, honestly. Because Lemon is an icon. She's going to be coming back uh, for uh, Canada vs. the World Season 2. That cast was just announced literally yesterday as of when I'm filming this. Um, so, I mean... Uh, while it was really close, I was like, it's, it's got to be Lemon. I do think Lemon just inched it out a little bit more. I don't know why I'm saying inched, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> and um, I just don't want to live in the universe where Lemon loses, frankly. But yeah, we have a big change in the top of the rankings here. That would cause a very different start uh, to this season than the one we got originally. Uh, but that's the way that's going to be. We're going to move on to episode two. All right, in episode two, we have the uh, Canadian uh, Heritage Moments uh, acting challenge. Um, this challenge was done in teams, but I decided not to judge it in teams because I feel like this was a challenge where the performances were very much like split down, you know. There wasn't one team that did substantially better than the other, so it just doesn't really make sense to me. Usually I would... Uh, in most cases do, like, especially, like, you know, early in the season, traditionally, if there's an acting challenge, um, it has been judged in teams, but I just decided to go against that because I didn't feel, I didn't, it didn't feel correct to me. Um, but yeah, in this challenge, originally, we had Lemon winning, uh, with Priyanka, Jimbo, and Kiara High, I did uh, keep it pretty similar. Um, I decided to only do the three uh, top placements because uh, I didn't feel like Kiara did well enough for me where it like, warranted a high placement. I do think Kiara was definitely the fourth place in this challenge, though, for me. I just don't feel like it was one of those where I, like, I'm struggling so hard between Jimbo and Kiara that I just gotta put them both high. That wasn't it for me, personally. Um, but I do think Priyanka did a better job in this challenge than Lemon. Lemon plays such a good, uh, this character that she did here and in, like, the, the pageant challenge later on in the season. This kind of, like, southern woman pageant girl slash mom. <laughs> she does that, that character and that voice and that tone so well. Uh... And she really, she really utilizes it to a great effect here uh, in this challenge. But Priyanka, I feel like, really was the star of her scene. Um, and, you know, she plays uh, this character that's meant to be, you know, kind of like horny, kind of like bimbo character, which I feel terrible saying, but that's like, that's exactly what it was. I don't have any better words to describe this character. Her entire character was was making advances towards Jimbo, was making advances towards everybody and acting stupid about it. So I don't know. But I do think she played it very well. Uh, and when I think of this challenge, I think of Priyanka. So it really was the correct choice for me to have Priyanka winning. Uh, and then obviously keeping Jimbo high here. Um, our safe placements are almost entirely the same. Uh, Alona Verley, Rita Baga, Scarlet Bobo, they were all originally safe. They're all going to stay safe. Uh, originally, Anastasia was safe and Boa was low, but I decided to switch them because Anastasia just did not give for me in this challenge. I feel like out of the characterization aspect between Boa and Anastasia, I think Boa definitely did a better job because Boa is supposed to be this like intense like suffragette character who's you know fighting for the drag queens right the right to vote uh and she really applies that and is in it um i do understand the critique that they give her of if kind of feeling like she's just she's not interacting with her fellow you know like castmates and then like acting with it with them um but i do feel like she really did a good characterization job whereas i feel like anastasia i just didn't really like her character didn't really make much sense to me, the way that she was trying to present it. And 
like does she do a better job like interacting with her fellow uh teammates like yeah i guess so but like not to the point where i feel like she did better than boa so i decided to move boa to safe and anastasia to low but i did keep the bottom two the same uh, of tainomi banks and kine uh i do think they did the worst in this challenge overall and they're gonna lip sync to if you could read my mind uh, and I love this goddamn song so much. It is so, so, so good. I didn't realize how much I loved it. I only started really, like, like a year ago, I thought of the song from this episode, because that was the first time I'd heard this version of it, and I was like, oh my god, this song slaps. And then I just started listening to it on repeat, and I think it made it on my Spotify wrapped, I'm not sure. Uh, but I love this song. And Tainomi definitely did a better job in this lip sync uh, than Kind. I don't think anyone's really questioning that. So Tainomi is going to stay here, and uh, Kine is going to be eliminated, and we're going to move on to episode three. All right, in this challenge, uh, in this episode, we have the Sorry Not Sorry uh, Girl Groups Challenge. Um, and uh, this challenge, I feel like I don't really understand the way that this was judged originally. Okay, so originally the winner was Priyanka, and I think that's perfectly fair. Priyanka was my second favorite in the challenge. But the high placements went to Scarlet Bobo, which I can also understand. Scarlet was my personal fourth favorite. And Boa, which, like, why? Like, Boa was probably my sixth favorite. And I mean, the top six people in this challenge, I think, did a really good job overall. Um, essentially, Lemon, Priyanka, Rita, Boa, Scarlet, Kiara, I feel like all of them did amazing jobs in this challenge. Um, but I feel like Boa was, like, very much my sixth favorite out of those six. So, like, I just, I don't understand why Boa was in the top here. Um, Lemon fucking killed it. She was a team captain and really sold the fuck out of it. Her first is my absolute favorite. If they are these, like, competing, like, like rival groups, you know, dance battling and, uh, and rapping against each other, I feel like lemon fits that brief the best because lemon is the only one who calls out everybody in the opposite team in her verse like when, it, when i step in the room girls quake scarlet starzy always safe reed is old and alone to be fake and that last girl what's her name like are you kidding me and she was originally safe for the challenge that's so stupid to me she was absolutely the winner of this challenge and I did go back and forth between who would be the third uh, top placement between uh, Scarlet and Rita. I did decide on Rita, though, because I feel like Rita um, made a very smart choice by being the only person to sing. Um, it really set her apart, and it makes me remember her vo verse in comparison to like a lot of other people uh, in this challenge. Um, and also, I do feel like Rita was serving very well with like the face and like you know the talking parts. Uh, the challenge a lot more than most other people so it really felt it felt the fairest and best to me to give Rita that high placement there uh, now this bottom situation was uh, an interesting uh, thing to try and figure out um, I knew that Tainomi was going to be safe out of the four that we have yet to talk about um, like her runway wasn't good I, I, that's just that I, I think I think we all know that uh, but in the challenge, she did perfectly fine. So I was like, there's no way Tainomi's going to be in the bottom. So now it came down to who's in the bottom two between Jimbo, Alona, and Anastasia. I feel like out of those three, the best verse was Jimbo's. I do feel like Jimbo did the worst, um, debatably with Alona in uh the actual like choreography of it and like that in the dancing they both missed a shit ton of moves anastasia definitely did the best in that category but jimbo did the best out of those three on the runway and had one of the best runways of the night i feel so that's why i ended up putting jimbo as the low because if we're talking about like the challenge i feel like you know she did better than those two on the verse better than this two on the runway yeah the choreography like was like probably a third but could be a second so it's just like adding all those things together it feels the fairest to me to keep jimbo out of the bottom and i know people are gonna say that's favoritism towards jimbo but that's the way i really feel about it anastasia and elona i just didn't really enjoy their verses uh their runways um i do enjoy uh, the concept of anastasia's 
Um, but I didn't really love the execution of it, along with Alona's. I just, I wasn't living for the execution. Um, and, uh, Anastasia did perfectly fine when it came to the choreo, but not great. So that really only puts her above, like, three or four people in that category there. So it just felt the fairest to me to make it that way. Um, and I do feel like Alona just kind of did the worst of the challenge, just overall, like, carte blanche. Is that what that word means? It absolutely doesn't. Carte blanche means, uh, uh according to Google, complete freedom uh, to act as one wishes or thinks best. So that's absolutely not what that means. I just completely used that wrong. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Uh, Alona Verley and Anastasia Anakwe are gonna lip sync, uh, to Absolutely Not by Deborah Cox. Um, and... Starzy really didn't give the energy in this challenge that I would have hoped for. Like, she did a perfectly fine job in the lip sync, but I do feel like she played it a bit small. Um, Alona, I feel like, would have played it bigger. You know, she did Girlfriend, which is also like a higher energy song. Um, kind of not, not similar to... Uh, absolutely not in the way that they sound, but in the terms of like energy levels, I feel like that are necessary in order to give a really good lip sync to the song. She did give those levels to Girlfriend, and I feel like she could and probably would give those levels to Absolutely Not. So that makes me feel like Alona would probably do a better job uh, than Starzy here. So sadly, uh, Anastasia is going to be eliminated. And we're going to move on to episode four. In episode four, we have ourselves the unconventional materials design challenge, where they're split into three fashion houses and have to make outfits out of paper, plastic, or metal. Uh, since we have the same contestants here that we did originally, uh, the teams are going to be the same. Um, but I am deciding to judge this in teams because the way that I view this challenge at the outfits, I feel like very clearly one team was the best, one team was the middle, and one team was in the bottom, which was kind of the way it was done originally as well. Um, but with this being judged fully in the teams, I feel like Team Plastic deserves the win, all three of them, wholeheartedly. Their outfits are so amazing. I love the concept behind them. They really all fit together and mesh together so perfectly well. And personally for me, having to choose between uh, those three, of which is my favorite, is really like, I don't know, choosing like two two bowls of the exact same pasta. Just like, which one do you want? Like, they're the same fucking thing. They're they're so fucking good. They taste great. I, don't, I, I, I guess I'll choose the one on the left. Why not? You know, like, I wouldn't have a point in choosing one of them really over the others. So I feel like it's really only fair for me to choose all of them as the winners. Um, and also, this was like... The challenge, like, the criteria was fashion houses, you know? I feel like it just makes sense to give the winning team the win because they wouldn't be able to exist without each other, you know? They they wouldn't be able to exist with their other, like, housemates in that way. So it really just makes sense for me to actually give them all the win here. It just feels right. Um, and I think Team Paper did so much better than Team Metal. I mean, okay, so much better is maybe a bit of an exaggeration, but I appreciate the storyline of the Team uh, Paper, you know? We got the two knights defending the queen. That's, you know, it's the house, It's it connects all the pieces together with something that isn't just the material that the, the outfit is made out of. We get story, and I like that, and I appreciate that. Um, so I, I feel like it just makes sense for Lona, Jimbo... Uh, and Tiny, I'm going to be safe here. I can understand the critique, and I do understand the critique of, like, y you're doing this fashion house thing, but you're essentially giving one of your members a very easy out uh, on being the star of the show, that if your team does the best, they get the win, uh, which is the situation here with, like, Jimbo being, like, the queen, where, like, yeah, if your team is the best team, then you essentially gave somebody on your team the best position to be in, so they're going to win the challenge. Which is just like a bad idea on Alona and Tainomi's part, but I feel like it do the, the, the outfits aren't bad enough for them, either of them to be at the bottom, so I, I don't feel like they should be. Uh, and that means that uh, Team Metal is going to be in the bottom here. Um, I struggled on who to uh, give the uh, low placement too. I decided to give it to Priyanka. Honestly, for a similar reason that Brooklyn said that she liked Priyanka's outfit. There's something so, like, couture about, 
like her like metal dress with the umbrella. I don't know. I don't know why I like it, but I kind of do. Uh, and it just gives me the most out of those three looks, uh, out of Priyanka, Lemons, and Boa's. So I decided to put her as low, and Lemon and Boa are, are going to be the bottom two here. Uh, they're going to lip sync to Girlfriend by Avril Lavigne, and Lemon would win. I don't think this is a, a controversial take here. Uh, Lemon has shown that she can kill a high-energy lip sync. And the one lip sync we did get to see from Boa on this season was to Scar's Street Beautiful, so like not, not a high-energy song, but she didn't really bring it uh, as much as I would have hoped. So I would assume that Lemon would win this lip sync. Uh, so Boa is going to go here, and we're going to move on to episode 5. Alrighty, here in episode 5, we have ourselves the Snatch Game! Uh, now here in the Snatch Game, we have Tainomi Banks uh, instead of Boa. Um, and I don't believe that would end up changing too much about this Snatch Game. Uh, originally, uh, Jimbo won, uh, and Lemon and Rita Baga were high. Um, I did decide to put Scarlet Bobo as the high placement instead. I thought from the moment I watched this episode, I was like, oh, Scarlet's gonna be in the top, and then she wasn't, and I was confused. Um, I do think she did end up doing better than Rita Baga here. I don't think Rita did bad at all. Rita was easily fourth, uh, in this challenge for me. Um, but I just really enjoyed, uh, Scarlet's, uh, characterization of Liza, uh, better than, uh, Rita's, um, of Edith Piaf. Um, I do feel like it's kind of a double-edged sword, some of the jokes, um, for, with Edith Piaf for Rita, uh, where, you know, she's playing, like, uh, she's playing a version of uh, Edith as, like, a very old woman who is, you know, like, who she is playing as, like, like drugged up, essentially, like, on medication, like, oh, I, I'm sleepy, I, I'm French, I'm sleepy, I can't do a French accent. It kind of ends up making the jokes quieter than some of the other jokes that, like, Scarlet did, and it ends up making it, like, less notable for me, in a way, just due to the way that the jokes are, the way that they end up being structured. I do completely agree with the winner, though. Jimbo killed this. Lemon also did great as Jojo Siwa. Um, now, we do know that if Tainomi made the Snatch Game, she would have uh, most likely played Grace Jones, which I do think is a pretty optimal choice for Tainomi, I would say. Um, I was really struggling uh, and potentially wanting to put Tainomi higher, but I think realistically, like, if we're going based off of the other comedy challenge on this season, uh, which was the acting challenge, uh, Tainomi did a, not a really good job in that challenge. She just didn't do a good job in it. Um, and based off of the level of quality of this snatch game i don't see her doing better than i think there's zero chance frankly that she's doing better than jimbo lemon scarlet or rita and i was like pretty confident that she's not doing better than alona because alona who i haven't really mentioned much at all this video really did an amazing job in the snatch game and if i were the one judging this i'd be like Oh, Rita Alona, you're safe. But also, Rita Alona, you both did a great fucking job, and you should know that. I feel like they both did amazing. I just, uh, like, I think she could do better than Alona, but realistically, it that doesn't, it's not really a possibility for me. So, in my mind, the only possibility is where Tainomi's gonna be lower in the bottom. And I ended up deciding on the bottom just because we saw that Kiara... Um, had at least a joke that worked out decently well, and I'm afraid with choosing Grace Jones as a, as a Snatch Game character, uh, while I do think the impression would be good, I don't think Grace Jones as a character lends itself to being a character that's, like, good for, like, jokes, specifically. Because Grace Jones isn't known as, like, a comedy person, she's known as, like, a fashion kind of icon. Uh, and so I don't, I just don't assume that Tainomi would end up doing well in this challenge. So I did decide to place her in the bottom two with Priyanka, and they're gonna lip sync to I Drove All Night by Celine Dion, and Priyanka would win this. I mean, go back to like two videos ago on my channel. This performance by Priyanka is one of my favorite lip sync performances of Drag Race of all time. Uh, and I just don't see Tainomi doing better than her here, and also looking at the track records, Priyanka's got a win, uh, and a high placement, and I think a win, a high, and like a safe and a low or something. And Tainomi's got a bunch of safes and another bottom placement, so like, 
track record wise as well, Priyanka is better in that aspect. So Priyanka is going to stay here and Tainomi is going to leave. Uh, and we're going to move on to episode six. In episode six, we had ourselves the like law firm acting challenge where they were split into three groups and did, they had to create commercials. Um, you know, they're like kind of like law practices, whatever. Um, I kept the placements pretty similar to as they were originally. Um, originally, Rita Bagger won this challenge and Jimbo and Scarlett were high. And I did decide to keep those as the top three. But I do feel like Jimbo did a better job than Rita. Jimbo's uh, screaming of, it's my special day, is just, it's so iconic. It's so everything. She really does stand out as like the main character in their commercial for me. Uh, and I feel like the fact that Rita won this challenge when there was somebody also in her team that was like, the main character in their commercial is kind of weird to me. Like, I don't understand how that ended up happening personally, but I do still think Rita did a really good job. Uh, uh, Anita Hot Dog was her character name. I, that's like the only one I remember. It's not, like the only actual character name I remember just because it was dumb and she played it well. And then Scarlett uh, in her uh, uh, team with uh, Alona definitely stood out. Uh, to me more and really played and sold the character super well. Oh, and I, f I guess I forgot to mention, um, I just ended up putting Kiara in the team with Rita and Jimbo. Is there a chance that she could have gone with a different group? Maybe, but I don't think that ends up really changing her placement specifically. Uh, but it just really made the most sense in my brain. It would feel most likely that she would just uh, slot into where Boa uh, was uh, in the challenge. Uh, Priyanka was originally safe, and I kept her there. Lemon was low, I also kept her there. I completely agree with those placements. Um, and uh, I ended up putting Kiara in the bottom two with Alona. Kiara, I just don't think would end up doing super well in this challenge. Considering that I think that Rita and Jimbo would most likely be her teammates, I think they would outshine her uh, with the roles and like the way that they uh, were split up and everything. And uh, if she were to have a similar, like, you know, amount of lines and like the the actual like lines themselves and role and uh, presence in the challenge, I just like I just don't see a scenario where she ends up doing better than anybody in the top three. Uh, and it just makes the most sense and feels most likely for me that she would end up being in the bottom. Uh, so she is going to be in the bottom with Alona, and they're going to lip sync to "Scar Stir Beautiful" by Alessia Cara. And Alona did a really good job in this lip sync, but I do think Kiara could do a really good job as well. Um, this is a song that I feel like I feel like this is a very easy song to lip sync to, personally. Like I, I don't I don't really say that a lot about lip sync songs on Drag Race, but this I feel of any song is would probably be pretty easy to lip sync to. Um, and I feel that Kiara would most likely do a very similar, if not better, job to Alona. And again, looking at the track records, Kara's got two wins. This is her first bottom two. Alone has only been been placed safe or has been in the bottom before. So it just makes sense to me that Kiara would win this lip sync. So she's going to uh, win here and we're going to move on to episode seven. In episode seven, we have ourselves the like improv pageant challenge. Um, just for the sake of simplicity, Kiara is going to get Ilona's role. And again, I did decide to change up some uh, uh, placements in this episode. I changed up placements in literally, I think, every episode on this season. Because I don't feel like the season was judged very fairly. Uh, I mean, everybody kind of knows that. That was the main critique of the season when it came out, is that the episodes did not seem to be judged fairly at all. But they also didn't seem to be particularly rigged for really anybody. Except for, like, Rita a little bit early in the season, but, like, not... I mean, she ends up being in the bottom two twice in a row, so it's not really super rigged for her either. It just seemed to be, like... It kind of seemed like they took all the weirdest scenarios that they could most of the time that were still, you know, not completely made out of thin air. And I don't know why they ended up doing that, but, you know, oh well. Um, but uh, Lemon did win this challenge originally. She's still going to win the challenge. She does an amazing job here uh, playing uh, this, you know, uh, pageant daughter character. Um, originally, uh, Scarlet Bobo was high, which I just, I don't agree with. I just, I just don't see it. 
Um, I do feel like she did a pretty good job in the challenge, but I would say she's, you know, very solidly third or fourth with Rita. Like, I could see arguments for either. I just don't, I don't, I don't understand <laughs> her being high here um, for, for, for me personally. Uh, Rita was originally safe, though. That's going to stay that way. Jimbo was low, and I switched her to a high. Because, I mean, her talent portion was so fucking funny to me. And here's the... 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 The, the bald-headed dildo bird or something. <laughs> it's just so stupid. I love it. It's, it's everything to me. She she really did an amazing job in this challenge. Easily my second favorite. Um, The bottom two is essentially the same. Originally, Alona Verley was here, but here we have Kiara. I just don't imagine Kiara doing the best job here. Um, and as we saw originally, Priyanka didn't do a really good job here. Um, and I do feel like uh, Kiara would also definitely be hurt by the character. It just doesn't seem like a character that Kiara would necessarily thrive at playing this, like, this character that's kind of set up to be this kind of like moody you know pageant like girl like i don't want to do this like I, I just i don't see kiara fitting into that very well so i did decide to put her in the bottom two with priyanka they're gonna lip sync to hello by ali x and priyanka kills this lip sync i really love the comedy moments in here she also has some like actual like you know she like does a split and she really leans into the actual vibe of the song i just really think that she killed this and i mean we saw a lip sync happen with priyanka and kiara uh to uh, i drove all night in the original season and priyanka won that so most likely it just makes sense i feel for priyanka to win this as well so uh, Priyanka's gonna stay here, Kiara's gonna go, and we're gonna move on to episode 8. In episode 8, we have ourselves the makeover challenge. Um, I only changed really one thing here. Originally, uh, Scarlet uh, was high and Jimbo was, it's technically classified as low, uh, but I don't do low placements for 5% for, uh, episodes. I do win high safe and the bottom two. Um, and I decided to switch them. I feel like Priyanka did a really good job in this challenge. She, uh, I feel like she had a really great makeover. Um, and Jimbo, I also feel like did a stellar job in this challenge as well. And I, I, part of me was like, should I give Jimbo the win? I decided against it though. Again, this is the second episode in a row where I just don't really, uh, see the high placement for Scarlet. Just doesn't make that much sense to me. Like, her, her makeover's completely fine. Um, but it doesn't... It warrant a high place for me. I feel like Priyanka's and Jumbo's are clearly better in my opinion. <laughs> um, but I did decide to give the bottom two the same uh, of Rita and Lemon. Uh, they both had uh, pretty pretty substantial problems with their makeovers, so I feel like it just makes the most sense to put them in the bottom here. Um, and so they are going to be lip syncing uh, to um, uh, You Oughta Know by Alanis Morissette. And Rita, oh my god, I love this lip sync performance from Rita. It is so, so, so good. She really leans into the vibe of Alanis here. Uh, and it's sad to see Lemon leave in this scenario, but based off of the lip sync, and honestly based off of the challenge as well, I do feel like Rita did better in the challenge than Lemon. Uh, it just kind of makes the most sense to me. Um, and I gotta say, these lip syncs this season were so, so, so fucking good. If we're looking at the, like, a season's lip syncs as a whole, Canada season one is one of the seasons where I'm like, this season might have the best lip syncs of all time, period. It, they, uh, I mean, so many iconic ones. You Oughta Know is such a great lip sync. I Drove All Night is such a great lip sync. Girlfriend is a great lip sync. If You Could Read My Mind is a great lip sync. Uh, I Really Really Like You is a great lip sync. There are so many great lip syncs on this season. Uh, but... Uh, I just wanted to mention that. I, 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 don't, I don't know why I felt like I needed to mention that, but I did. I just, I love these lip syncs uh, so much on this season. Uh, but again, sadly, Lemon uh, is going to go home here, and we're going to move on to episode 9. And usually, for um, uh, four-person episodes where it's formatted as like a winner and a bottom two, I usually do win safe bottom two. I decided to do a high placement this time. I did end up keeping the placements the same besides that. Scarlet's gonna win. She had the best ball by far, uh, I feel. And then uh, Priyanka was uh, kind of close behind her. And then I think there's a drop off. And then it's Rita and Jimbo. Uh, the placements this episode feel very fair to me. So actually, I guess there is one episode where the placements technically stay the same. But I decided to edge Priyanka's safe up to a high because 
rewatching this episode, I was under the impression before I rewatched it again that Scarlet blew them out of the water and it was close between Priyanka, Rita, and Jimbo. But for me, Priyanka was so clear in a way second place. Like, I, there was just no shadow of a doubt to me. And so I felt like it felt more deserved for Priyanka to get a high place in here than a safe. So I ended up doing that. Um, will I potentially do that in the future? I don't know. Uh, but it was the move that felt the most correct to me here. So I, that's why I ended up doing it. Uh, Jimbo, Rita, can lip sync to Closer by Tegan and Sarah. Rita very clearly wins this lip sync. There's no, I don't think there's any arguing about that. But sadly, Jimbo does go here and does not get to win the season. I wished there was a scenario where Jimbo got to win the season because it would have been so satisfying for Jimbo to win the season of Drag Race. It really would have. But I mean, I don't, I don't see a scenario where she doesn't do the worst in this ball and that she doesn't go home in the lip sync. So she, it just, it's sadly, it's the fairest thing to happen. Uh, and we're ending up with the exact same final three that we had originally, moving into the finale. Now, originally, Priyanka ended up winning the season, and I considered that, absolutely. I considered all three of them winning this, this season. Not all together, but, <laughs> but individually. All three of them could have won the season for me. I think they all have reasons. But Scarlet Bobo... Oh my god. Here's the part of the episode where I talk about how much I adore Scarlet Bobo. I love this bitch. Uh, in this season, and the way that this is judged, she has the best track record. Uh, and it's not particularly close. I think uh, Scarlet's PPE scores 3.77, and then Priyanka's second at 3.11. Like, it's not, it's not close. And I do think Scarlet arguably has the best verse in the finale with Priyanka. I feel like Priyanka might have the best verse, I don't really know. Uh, but I do think that Scarlet for sure has the best final lip sync of the episode. So I mean, best track record, best final lip sync. I, I, if I had to choose, I'd say Priyanka's is probably better for the verse and the performance in there, so second best finale challenge performance like it just makes sense to me that scarlet's the winner of this season and this is no uh shade to priyanka because i fucking love priyanka i mean she's probably i'd say priyanka is potentially top 10 favorite drag race queens of all time for me but again so is scarlet bobo i love her aesthetic uh she does this punk clown fantasy that i just absolutely adore uh and uh, like if we're going off based off of like my ideal drag aesthetic. Scarlet Bobo is the most popular drag queen that fits what I enjoy to a T. Like I really enjoy the way that she presents herself uh, and her looks and like her tricks and what she can do and how she performs. Like she really is just like everything to me in that, in that aspect. And I just, like going into this, I knew Scarlet was gonna win. I just kind of didn't know by how much, uh, and it ended up being clear in a way Scarlett uh, did the best this season. So it kind of ended up working out for me. <laughs> Here are all of the track records for the season. This is a very interesting uh, track records chart because six people win challenges and five of them win two challenges, which is very interesting. There's only one single like one challenge winner and all six of the challenge winners make the final six. So it's a very... It's kind of an interesting chart here. Um, and also that section of Alona, Tainomi, and Boa, who literally only play safer in the bottom, uh, get, that get eliminated back to back, makes it look kind of weird. Uh, but that's that's the way that the cookie crumbled, so that's what we got going on here. Um, thank you all so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you wish. Leave your thoughts, feelings, and opinions down below. Uh, as always, I will leave my Twitter link down below if you want to go follow me on there. Again, thank you all so much for watching, and as always, take care. Bye-bye.